Hello Israel, it's Ariana here again uh, with another teaching. Um, the name of this teaching is from my one this is just from my one law series, and this is one law part eight, Hebrews chapter five, as standing in the gap. As usual, I'm gonna read um, the particular chapter and then I'm gonna come back with a short commentary. Alright, hallelujah, let's get started. Hebrews chapter five, verse one. For every priest taken from among men is ordained for men and things pertaining to God or Yahuwah, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity? And by reason hereof he ought as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of Yahuwah, as was Aaron. So also Yahusha glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he said also in another place, Thou art a priest for ever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of Yahuwah a high, and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Uh, Melchizedek, that's better. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when for the time for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of Yahuwah, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that use, useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are, are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to both discern good and evil. Hallelujah. So let's go over these short, I think there's only 14 verses. This chapter, yeah, only 14 verses. It's a pretty short chapter. But um, so um, I wrote a couple of notes down that I wanted to cover first. Um, and, and I wanted to point out um the obvious. The obvious is the righteousness of Yahuwah who offered us a bridge by whom we may become obedient is a gift from, from Yah to all mankind that he has ordained from the foundation of the world. He therefore sent us Yahushua, Yahusha, the Lamb of Yah, to stand in the gap between him and mankind. Um, and as of days of old, Yahuwah anointed men that he had offered up oblations, that he may offer up oblations on behalf of them to atone for sin. So this is um, Yah's way of um, standing in the gap, presenting a bridge to uh, the nation of Israel and to, uh, and to Gentile nations that we might be reconciled um, back to him. And uh, Yahushua is that um, uh, final uh, sin sacrifice according to according to Torah uh, that must be offered up blood must be shed for the remission of sins according to law to the law um, and we can see that in Hebrews 9 and 22 and it says and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission or no remission of sins um, even to this day we we see we have still have some religious organizations that say the law is done away with but we know this to be um, not the truth. The law was and is the basis of all things in the new covenant. As we know, when Yahushua or Yahusha referred to the uh, referred to the law, he was not referring to the not yet written New Testament or uh, the verses in Scripture within that. He was re uh, uh, reflecting to uh, the prophets, the Psalms, and the Torah itself. Um, so everything is built upon that foundation. Uh, even his, um, even Yahuwah's uh, sacrifice, uh, sin sacrifice of Yahusha, even his uh, decision to um, use Yahusha as that, uh, to stand in the gap of mankind, to reconcile, to repent, to reconcile himself back to himself, 
uh, to reconcile mankind back to himself. Yahushua based that on the law that there was, you, blood had to be shed in order for sin to be um, atoned for. So we can see that in the Torah as well. Um, <clears throat> so um, the law was is the basis of all things in the new covenant from the birth of the Mashiach, his ministry, his death, his resurrection, and his commission to re Israel to preach throughout the world. All of these are based upon the foundational principles we can find in the Tanakh or the Torah, uh, the Psalms, and the prophets, the book of the prophets as well. So Yahushua's very death was Yahusha's very death was based on the law of sin, sacrifice, blood to be sacrificed for sin. We can find examples of the laws for sin sacrifice in the book of Leviticus. We can go to Leviticus chapter 4, verse 23, and it says, Or if his sin, wherein he has sinned, come to knowledge, he shall bring his offering, a kid of goats, a male without blemish, verse 24, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of the goat and kill it in the place where they killed the burnt offering before Yahuwah. It is a sin offering. And the priest shall take the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offerings and shall pour out his blood at the bottom of the altar of burnt offerings. So we can see here um, the, the the bringing of uh, a sacrifice in this particular instance, a kid of goat, male, without blemish. Um, and the priest shall lay his hand upon the goat and kill it in the place where burnt offerings are offered before Yahuwah as a sin offering and that that blood should be poured out for that sin at the foot uh, at the bottom of the offering uh, a burnt offering so we see here this is an example of uh, the laws of sin sacrifice a sacrifice made for uh, sin to atone for sins um, we can look in um we can look in in verses let's look at this second verse here i think it's the second verse yeah um let's continue on with this and then i'll come back to that but also we can see and um on the first verse it actually says for every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men and things pertaining to Yahuwah that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin so we see in in, um, in the Torah where there were um, um, laws on how uh, sacrifices were to be made to atone for sin and we also can see um, through this um, through the ordination of Yahuwah as the uh, last sin sacrifice for the nation of Israel and, and mankind, but we can also see that his um, his establishment as a high priest is not something that he decided to do himself. It's not something that um, um, the the ordination or the priesthood, the Aaronic priesthood or Levitical priesthood was established on something that was it come from within man itself these people were uh, ordained or called of Yahuwah to serve and we can see great examples of this in, in the book of Exodus we can look at Exodus 28 uh, chapter uh, 20, chapter 28 verse 1 and it says and take thou this is um, Yahuwah speaking to Moses and saying and take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and his sons I mean yeah uh, thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, Aaron's sons. So he's taking Aaron and his sons, and they're going to serve in the, in the office of the priesthood according, according to um, Yahuwah's wishes. And then in Exodus 28, again, it says, this is actually establishing the, the garments uh, that they will uh, wear as they, Aaron and his brother, uh, Aaron, um, and his sons will minister unto Yahuwah in the, in the priest's office. And it says in uh, chapter 28, verse 4, and these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate and, and an ephod and a robe and a broader coat, a mitre and a girdle, and they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons that he may minister unto me in the excuse me, in the priest's office so here again this is not something that um, um, men are not ordained they don't ordain themselves to stand in a gap um, and to um, 
uh, as a pre as performing priestly duties for the nation of Israel or, or Gentile nations, but they are they they are of, ordained of Yahuwah. And um, you can see here that Yahusha, who this was his ordination, this was his um, this is was his his assignment, this was his um, duty uh, as 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 Yah had ordained it to be. Um, uh, verse two: Who can who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is com compassed with infirmity? So, um, not only did um, Yahuwah uh, ordain Yahusha as a high priest of uh, the order of Melchizedek, but he also went a step further. He sent him to earth and uh, wrapped him in flesh and. And so he could identify with the struggles and the what it means to be be um, encased in flesh, right? And um, so Yahusha could have compassion on uh, on those that are ignorant in the way, uh, or for those who have stepped out of the way. So those that who are not knowledgeable of the ways of Yahuwah and those that have are knowledgeable have stepped outside of the way and it says because he himself was covered or housed in the flesh as is mankind and he can identify with being encased in flesh let us not forget that Yahushua was filled with the Ruach and that he was and it was this that allowed him to resist the devil and keep from sin um, so did we, we know that he Yahushua was without sin that he never sinned and we know that he was able to resist the temptations of the enemy uh, when he went those 40 days in the wilderness right and so we can look back at those references in scripture and we can see in any book of the gospel we can see where he quoted scripture he quoted he quoted quote excuse me he quoted the Torah um, in order to um, resist the enemy you know and not fall for his uh, his traps uh, verse 3 and by reason hereof he ought as for the people so also for himself to offer for sin so not only did he become the sin offering for people but um, his he uh, he himself was uh, a sin offering so he would he would be the one which would uh, we would have to believe on and repent in order for us to be reconciled back to Yahuwah, but he was, like I said, standing in the gap, and he himself was was um, a sacrifice for the sins of mankind. So it was twofold. He was the sacrifice. Uh, he uh, stands in the gap for us to be reconciled back to Yahuwah, and he himself became that sacrifice. That blood spilled. His blood spilled for um, for Israel and the nations repentant Israel and a repentant um, Gentile and <clears throat> verse 4 and no man taketh this honor unto himself but he that is called of Yahuwah as was Aaron which I read um, I read in 28 Exodus 28 and 1 and Exodus 28 and 4 is that um, um, Moses was instructed by Yahuwah to um, ordain uh, on the preparation and ordination of Aaron and his sons to the priesthood to serve Yahuwah uh, verse 5, so also Yahushua glorified not himself to be made high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. And we can see this in Matthew, in the book of the in the Gospels, we can see it in Matthew 3 and 17. It says, I know a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately following this is when Yahuwah, Yahushua went to the wilderness to be tempted uh, for 40 days of the enemy. And verse 6, as he said also in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So we can we can find this two occurrences outside of, I think, four or five occurrences in the, in the book of Hebrews. It's here in this book here. Um, we can find two other places in, in um, scripture. We can look at um, the Torah and the Psalms, right? We can look in Genesis 14. Uh, 18 through 19 and we can look in the book of Psalms um, um, 110 chapter 110 I'm going to read both because it actually is talking about it's referencing these places here in um, Hebrews and Genesis 14 18 and Melchizedek, Melchizedek king of Salem brought forth bread and wine and he was the high priest of the most high Yahuwah and he blessed him and said 
Blessed be Abram of the Most High Elohim, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High Elohim, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. So this is uh, this is immediately following um, Abram delivering Lot from um, the enemies in, um, in Sodom. So this was the right after the battle where you know Lot had been taken. Um, him and his his family and all his goods have been taken by a war between Sodom and another um, a Gentile nation. And Abram heard about what had happened to Lot, and he went and uh, rescued him and brought all his wealth back with him. And this is what happened immediately following that. Um, in Psalm 110, as um, as I said, it says, "And Yahuwah said unto my, um, unto Yahuwah." Yahusha. And a lot of people kind of um, look at this Psalm 110, and this is David speaking, and they're saying that Yahuwah said unto my Lord, um, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies a footstool. And if you do a little research, you'll see that he was talking, um, Yahuwah was talking to Yahusha um, and, uh, about his position after he fulfilled his mission, right? After he would fulfill his mission. So here, and the, and the psalm of David is talking, he said, Yahusha, David is saying, and Yahuwah said unto my Lord, who is Yahusha, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. And, uh, and Yahu, uh, Yahuwah uh, shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion, who thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. Yahuwah hath sworn and will not repent or change his mind. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And 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 uh, Yahusha at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads of over many countries. So we're here we're talking David in this psalm is actually talking referring to Yahuwah and Yahusha and he's also saying here in verse four to six, and Yahuwah has sworn and will not repent, thou art speaking of Yahusha, art a priest of forever at the order of Melchizedek. And this is what in the book of Hebrews chapter five where um is um as he referring to and um and Yahusha, he's saying here again, David is saying, Yahusha at thy right hand shall strike through the kings of the day in the day of his wrath. So we're talking about when Yahusha returns, right? And this is what he's going to do. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. So Yahusha, when he returns to pass judgment on earth, he it says he shall wound the heads over many countries. So these are the leaders, the presidents, the prime minister, the kings over many countries. When he comes, he's going to pass judgment. And he said, he shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore, shall he lift up the head. Hallelujah. So in verse 7 of Hebrews chapter 5, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he's fear. So we know that there's two places in the gospel. One is where it says, and Jesus wept, and then this is another place, and when we and we know that he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he he's in, in employing with Yahuwah that if it's at all possible within his will that his cup would pass for him, and this is his um, his uh, being uh, nailed to the stake and dying for the sins of, of the nation of Israel and um, the and mankind. So that's what they're referring to here in verse seven and verse eight. Though he were a son, because remember, in in the gospel, before he was he was sent into the wilderness to um, be tempted of the enemy, he uh, he was approved by Yahuwah. And he was and, and he was he was deemed to be a Yahuwah was well pleased. So though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. So through his obedience and his death, he learned obedience um, to Yahuwah. Uh, so uh, in verse nine, <clears throat> and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. So again, he is the, he is. Uh, Yahuwah has has Yahusha standing in the gap between him himself and mankind, and it says eternal salvation unto all that obey him, eternal salvation to all the nation of Israel, to the Gentile nations, for all those that obey Yahusha. You cannot get to the Father until you go through Yahusha. Hello, Hallelujah.
uh, called of Yahuwah and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is, the, this is Yahusha. This is the Mashiach, the Messiah, he's speaking up here. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull hearing. So it's like, here it is. Yahuwah has, you know, he has ordained it. He has uh, uh, set Yahusha as the bridge. He's standing in the gap for the nation of Israel and for the Gentile nations. And still, even after all these thousands of years, right? This is what this is saying, that uh, we're still, Israel is still hard of hearing. A repentant person is still hard of hearing. He's saying, seeing you are dull of hearing. Okay, and then he goes on to um, ad admonish us even further. He says, and uh, for in verse 12, he says, for when, for when, for the time you ought to be teachers, okay, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of Yahuwah. So, because we are dull of hearing, we hard-headed and a stiff-necked nation, and non-repentant, he's saying we should be teachers, and we should have no need for one to teach us again the basic principles of the oracles of Yahuwah. And he said, and we are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Because of our dullness of hearing, our stiff neckness, our non repentant um, spirits, right, our non repentant souls, we are still on milk, which we should be on strong meat. So, this is his admon admonition. He's admonishing us for this. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Because remember, in, in the gospel, the, the commission was for Israel to go. Um, not just to the um, to the um, to the nations seeking the lost sheep of Israel, but we were to go and spread the and the commission was to go and preach the gospel to to the whole of the earth, not only to the nation of Israel, but until Gentile nations that the Gentile people that would hear the gospel and believe on Yahushua, therefore rec being reconciled into eternal salvation back to Yahuwah. So those that would that would um, um, would actually hear so I'm going to read verse 13 and for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe but strong meat belongs to them that are full of age even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil so um Israel I hope you've enjoyed this short teaching this again was um one law part 8 Hebrews chapter 5 standing in the gap hallelujah